Hey folks, this is Kalani. I want to talk to you about a few things to do with Guild Wars 2. So this is going to be the first of several videos, and this one will we'll be talking about gold and the economy in Guild Wars 2. So I want these to be discussion videos, so any input that you have on the topics, please leave them in the comment section below. Anything that I say may end up being negative, positive. Remember this is a discussion video, so there's going to be a little bit of each. Now basically i'm I'm going to be talking about a, a few different topics, so that's the reason why I kind of separated these videos. This one's going to be about the gold and the economy, and future ones are going to be about different topics. so I can keep these videos and their comment sections as a discussion overall, so we don't have overlapping topics uh, messing about in the comment section, which can be a little frustrating. So gold and the economy. I want to start with income now, most of the people. Most of the, the casual people who play Guild Wars 2 probably aren't the type to play the trading post. So, that's kind of an interesting concept. In itself, a trading post actually doesn't bring any gold into the economy. In fact, the trading post for as, m as much gold as you make, you're actually taking gold out of the economy due to listing prices. So, I'm not going to talk about that as a source of income. First reason is that it's it's more complex than you, you'd believe. You need to know what you're doing when you're playing the trading post. The second reason is that, as I say, it doesn't bring inherent gold into the economy. It's just players trading gold, essentially. Or players hoarding gold, depending on who you are. And the third reason is that it's not actually a decent source of income uh, into, your, into your character's wallet. Unless, first and foremost, you have the gold to start it up. Secondly, you have the time, which is more of a factor than people would think. And then you need to know, again, what you're doing, and you need to find a niche market. So, I'm not going to talk about the trading post a great deal, because that's kind of on the side, shall we say. But, income is very important in the economy. Now, when when you think of the best way to make money right now in Guild Wars 2, you probably think of Frost Gorge champion farming. And you'd probably still be right, I'm going to be honest. Um, throw in dungeons there for the first, first playthrough of a dungeon, and something like that. World boss is also somewhere up there, and depending on what the living story is, taking part in the living story may may yield a decent profit. For example, when Scarlet's invasions came, taking part in them and tagging as many champions as you could was actually better than any champion train farming, simply because you got more champions, you got more boxes, so you got more gold. Now, if we rewind a little bit, it's actually not that far back, you may remember Citadel of Flame Path 1. Now, this is where the problem started for income and gold in the economy, simply because a lot of gold is being generated into the economy. If you think of Citadel of Flame, you're getting a lot of gold from bosses, which is gold generated in the game into the economy. You're getting a lot of gold from drops overall, again, generated into the economy. And it's kind of awkward, because let's be honest, Citadel of Flame was incredibly efficient. It was the most efficient way to make gold for people who didn't have access to well, the trading post, or a, a massive amount of assets, such as precursors and the like. So, Citadel of Flame was, for the most part, the only way to make gold for a very long time. Now, that's a problem first, because no one's doing anything else. If you want, for example, to farm tier 6 for your legendary, you went to Citadel of Flame to get the gold to buy a tier 6 off the trading post. That's just how it was. That was You'd get more tier 6 per hour farming the gold to buy tier 6 than you would actually farming the tier 6 which, as you can imagine, isn't really ideal. Um, add to that the fact that nobody is there inherently in the game world. Everybody's over at Sith of Flame who wants to actually make this gold. No one's farming the zones where these materials might drop. Kind of awkward. It's incredibly frustrating in the sense that Sith of Flame was far more profitable than any of the fractals were, when fractals were a damn sight harder. Add to that, we can compare that to Ara as well. Ara was a damn sight harder than Citadel of Flame Path 1. You could do Citadel of Flame Path 1 in 6 or 7 minutes. If you did it uh, 
three or four warriors, two or one mesmer, everyone zerker, everyone know what they're doing. Uh, obviously that was a really weird time because everybody started to be really elitist about who they took, which was not ideal, to say the least. But let's let's get back on track for gold and the economy. So income has always been really strange. Right now you'd probably be lucky if you could get three to four gold guaranteed per hour. Very, very lucky indeed. Um, which kind of brings me to the second point of a lot of income, or decent in um, decent income rather, will directly rely on RNG. And if anyone's not familiar with RNG, <laughs> you probably should be by now because Arenet seems to love it, is random number generator, or the fact that everything is random. So the best example is precursors. If you if you have a precursor drop, your gold has just increased significantly to the point where you probably won't need to farm gold again unless you're wanting to get a legendary uh, or don't already have one. So that's kind of the extreme of things. Taking that a little a little kind of back step, you've got random income in the form of everything in the Mystic Forge which is kind of crazy. You can get the precursors there, once again, which... I mean, if you spend 500 gold on great swords, that's a decent amount of great swords to throw in the Mystic Forge, and you get a Dusk, you've profited. End of story. You've profited off spending 500 gold, if you're lucky. Now, the amount of great swords that you're throwing in, if you are incredibly lucky and the game decides to throw precursors at you, you could actually get multiple precursors, in which case you start to multiply your gold ridiculously, which is kind of crazy, to say the least. But another type of random income is things to do with major sigils, item promotion, and basically anything you throw in the forge, let's be honest, because you could get a, a ridiculous outcome um, of, of major sigils. For example, if you put 200 major sigils in the forge and you end up getting uh, 200 sigils probably cost you about 4 gold, give or take. They're about 2 silver each. So, if you... It's kind of crazy. If you get even 2 worthwhile superior sigils, you've already paid for that and depending on those sigils, for example, if you get 2 energy, that's 2 gold profit. That just... that Out of 50 and then every... Um, so, because you get 50 because 200 for each time is 50 uh, chances, more or less, 50 forges. But then every forge which doesn't give you a superior sigil can give you a major sigil, which you can then throw back in the forge. So any every time you get a major sigil, that's another major sigil towards another forge, if that makes sense. So you actually get more than 50 chances at this. Which, <laughs> I mean, at the top of RNG, if you get 50 three gold superior sigils. However unlikely, you can go from four gold to 150 gold. That's that's kind of the extremity of where you can go with this kind of income. Which is a little ludicrous, considering that guaranteed income is so, so low. Which is weird. But that kind of takes it a bit further, because guaranteed income kind of relies on the game being rewarding to play. Which it's kind of not right now. The best example of this, when Tecatl came out, there was, I think it was three guilds, or three servers in the US, and two servers in EU, managed to down that within the first kind of 30, 40 hours. The gold reward for Tecatl was one gold. Which is kind of... Well, disappointing to say the least, let's be honest. <laughs> so much so that they actually increased that in uh, a future patch to 2 gold, which is still a little lackluster considering the amount of effort, the amount of time that went into a Tikal fight. But, I don't know. It, it's, it's really, really strange. But it, it's kind of really obvious in so many different aspects of Guild Wars 2 right now. I, I can't think of the last reward from a living story which was actually tradable 
the last rare reward which was tradable. The best example that I can think of this was even the birthday gifts, the Queen Jenna. Whereas, yeah, fine, there was loads of these Queen Jennas rolling around, especially considering that every character, which turned a year old, got one. But they weren't tradable. Which makes me think, anybody who comes down the line and wants to complete a set of minis won't actually be able to because they will have zero, zero access to that mini Jenna for the first year. And then if we get another mini in the second and third and fourth year, they simply won't have any room to compete or get that extra mini depending on when they started the game. Which is really strange, but I don't know, it's, it's odd, it's very odd, very odd indeed. But we didn't, another thing, we didn't get anything specific for the anniversary of Guild Wars 2. We didn't get a mini for that, for example. If we had, and that was tradable, that would then increase in value because people who started after that anniversary event would have no access besides at the trading post, which is where a lot of the minis in Guild Wars 1 actually kind of bumped up in value every year because they were, let's be honest, they were rare, and they became rarer and rarer. So... It, it's strange to think that they they don't give monetary rewards for any of the kind of expected things. I mean, fair enough. We are getting skins with Living Story, which we can buy at the trading post. Oh, not the trading post, sorry. Well, yeah, they're at the trading post, but you buy them for Black Lion uh, tickets. Now, you can sell those, and those do bring quite a few gold after the after the Living Story ends. But they're not attainable anywhere in the actual living story, and they're not part of playing Guild Wars 2. You get them from Black Lion chests, meaning that you have to go out of your way to try and get these items, or you have to farm enough gold to buy it off the trading post from the people who have got one from a Black Lion chest, to buy it to then get a reward later on, which is kind of a really roundabout way of trying to get gold and actually lies more in playing the trading post than actually playing the game. Which as I say, playing the game kind of isn't really that rewarding right now, which is a total shame. I mean, the best the best way I can emphasize this is that if you want gold, you're running Frostgorge champion farming. There's practically no choice in this. You you go to Frostgorge, you look for the champion trainer and you farm your heart out. There's no choice, for example, to go down to Mount Maelstrom. There's there's nothing down there which will... It's like for, for playing events, for playing anything down in Mount Maelstrom. You won't get the same amount of gold, you won't get the same chance of rare loot, you won't get the same chance of potential gold. It's just not as rewarding to play in Mount Maelstrom as it would be to play in Frostgorge Sound. Which is annoying, because they've got this huge, rich, lush world... But nobody cares, because it's not rewarding to go out into it. Which is really frustrating. Really, really frustrating. But, it's not kind of... The other side of this is gold sinks. Because, as I, as I was saying, playing the trading post is a little bit of a gold sink, because you lose money from the economy in listing prices. But, there's there's no real gold sinks in Guild Wars 2. And, and by gold sink, I mean a, a system or item or reward or anything which takes gold out of the economy, takes it away from the players. Now, you may say um, things like legendaries. That's a gold sink. It's not, because anything that you buy off the trading post to go towards your legendary is going into the hands of another player which means that gold's still in circulation, meaning it's not taken out of the economy, so it's not actually a gold sink. Fair enough, you don't have the gold, and there's a reason for you to spend the gold, but that gold is still in someone's hands, meaning that it's in circulation, meaning that gold becomes less valuable. Um, I just want you to understand that. The more gold in the economy, the less gold is actually worth. So, even though, for example, if everybody suddenly started getting 10 gold an hour, Fair enough, you'd have more gold, but the prices would... Everything would rise, because everybody would be more willing to pay 20 gold for a single uh, tier 6 material, if it ever got to that point. Which means that 
essentially people would say, oh, these are selling for 20 gold. I'll post it at 25. And then you get you get the same disparity we've got now between buy and sell, just at a higher gold value. So increasing the amount of gold coming into the economy isn't necessarily a good thing. But we definitely need more places to spend that gold. Because I'd had discussions with uh, my Guardian friend, who if you saw my Twilight video would have seen. We were saying, right, well, we, we, we've got our legendaries cool what do we uh what do we need gold 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 for now what, what like do we need gold are we are we needing gold now um the answer was no i mean to me i i like to have a nice stockpile of gold because i actually spend a lot of gold on things to preview for the channel so um things like the the new items in the gem store new costumes new armor armor sets i like to be able to buy those to obviously show off kind of uh, coloration and and dyes and all that stuff, but that's why that's like my gold sink. But he he has no reason to to farm for gold right now because he just doesn't need the gold. He's sitting at a hundred gold left, um, and he he figures that'll cover pretty much anything he wants from now to whenever. Which which got us thinking. So there's there's no real gold sinks, which is a bit of a bit of an issue. But then you look at, at gems. Now you could consider gems a, a very heavy gold sink, and right now it is. You have to spend over six gold to get a hundred gems. With half the items coming out at eight hundred gems, that's a lot of gold. That's forty-eight gold. So you you having to spend over forty-eight gold to get half of these items, which is a lot of gold when you think about it. If 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 you say five gold an hour, which is let's be honest, pretty generous uh, sometimes, depending on, on what may drop for you. Five gold an hour, that's ten hours of work to get your your gem item, whatever, you, whatever you're getting for 800 gems, which is a little crazy. Obviously, depending on what you drop, depending on what you're doing, it's kind of, as I say, that's just kind of a little bit of an average, but still crazy. Still, still very crazy. Now, the interesting thing about that is that it will get to the point where people think, oh, well I make, for example, five pounds an hour. That's ridiculously low. Let's say you make, screw it, you make the eight pounds an hour, which will um, pay for your gems. So imagine if you, if, you, if you were working and you got an hourly wage worth the 800 gems. That's basically, you could spend an hour of your, of your work time an hour of your wage to get 800 gems to pay for this item to then not have to farm the gold and, and happily do whatever you want in game instead of farming the gold. People will turn to buying gems to either get their items or getting their gold a lot a lot quicker than they they may have otherwise which which isn't actually a bad thing. Think about it these gems are stabilized and their price fluctuates depending on how many people buy the gems for gold and how many people trade the gems for gold so if you if you buy a hundred gems for gold you up the price of gems but if you buy gems for real money and then essentially sell those gems for gold you reduce the price of uh, gems so eventually you get to the point where it stabilizes because people are buying more gems for real money to trade into gold to get the items in game that they want which is 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 not a bad thing don't don't think that's a bad thing because it's not that means arena net is getting money arena net getting money means a better game for us full stop but i'm just curious about where that will stabilize because over the last few uh, living stories where a lot of gem items have come out it's going up and up and up. So that's going to be really interesting to see when it stabilizes. But it's it's a curious one because in Guild Wars 2 gold has always been kind of difficult to get and you you have to really really farm and work at something to get a lot of gold which is strange for an MMO. I'll be honest, this is the first MMO where I haven't been completely flooded with gold. 
simply because actually there's a few reasons for it. They kind of uh, destroyed crafting as a way to make gold because everybody had access to every trade skill as well as gathering um, without even having to have a trade skill which meant that everybody had access to all the materials but then add to that that there's no competition for materials and that increases the amount of materials in the trading post and if, if, if people don't have competition for it they know they can happily go for example down to Cursed Shore get their tier 6 materials and do whatever they want with it there's no risk of going out and, and nothing being there which is why um, the materials uh, depreciate in value but everybody could do the crafting themselves so there's no real reason to buy it off the trading post which meant that a whole kind of section of uh, income generation kind of got destroyed in Guild Wars 2 simply because everybody had access to it. Um, which is really strange. But add to that that rewards in the game aren't exactly the most rewarding, shall we say? Monetarily, anyway. And that the trading post is global. The trading post being global means that there are stupid amounts of people first playing the trading post, posting, and uh, placing buy orders. Now, all of those put together uh, are kind of ludicrous because you have thousands of people wanting to buy something when it becomes popular and thousands of people selling something when it becomes profitable. And it, it kind of... Things which are profitable become unprofitable very quickly and only a few people are able to make money off it. Um, whereas if you are, for example, on a small server, then it's a lot more localized. It's a lot more uh, more likely that you could kind of dominate a market, actually. Which, again, is not necessarily a bad thing that Guild Wars 2 is global. That means that uh, you, you, you never have to worry about something being on the trading post, let's be honest. And everything is going to drop in price eventually due to the amount of people which have access to the content. So it, it's nicer in that respect, but obviously that means that you you can't necessarily make as much money off it. But again, not necessarily a bad thing. But just a few things that I actually wanted to get kind of written down, or rather spoken, um, just to see what you guys think. Are you happy with how Guild Wars 2 is right now in the, the kind of the amount of gold that you can attain and then on the flip side what you have to spend that gold on? Because as I say, if you've got everything in game, if you're happy with how your character looks, if you don't want a legendary, what are you spending your gold on? Because there may not be a great deal to spend it on. Now, um, I apologise for this going on and on and on. This actually ended up quite long. I didn't really mean for that. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I tried to split these videos, but I guess if we've learned one thing, it's that I can ramble, and I apparently did. So I apologise for that, but if you stayed with me to the end, please leave me uh, a little bit of a little bit of a discussion in the comments below. I really want to know what you think about how Guild Wars 2 is handling the economy and the rewards, and how much gold you have access to. That's another curious thing. How much gold do you have? And are you happy with that amount, or do you wish you had more? Yes, that's good, good. Leave me that in the comment section below, if you please. Now, that's it for this video. That's all I really have to talk about for the gold and the economy. As I say, I'm going to throw a few more of these out. Hopefully they won't be as long, because 20 minutes is kind of crazy. But thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun. And as always, I will see you next time.